big supporter of this channel is Slate Black Industries. Go to their website, slateblackindustries.com. Use discount code BJO10 for 10% off MLOC accessories. I'd like to thank them again for supporting this channel. Let's get in the video. Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're going to be going over each of our individual AK kit setups along with our AK uh, setups in general, just in a separate video. So stay tuned for part two of this video. I'm joined here by Clay and Dante. And uh, Clay, do you want to start it off? And sure. Introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm Clay, also uh, M57 firing device on Instagram. What I'm running right now is a uh, Poi SA 
belt kit, also called a lift chick, that I got from 913 Quartermaster. Um, it's an old Soviet Afghan war style of gear set up for, I believe it's four grenades, six mags, and um, two flares. And uh, it's set up originally for 545 mags, that's why I can't close the flaps on these 762 mags. But in here I've got six mags, uh, radio, knife, um, some meds, not as complete as I want, but I'm kind of messing around. And, and then I've got some smokes temporarily, and I guess my long whip's out. Um, <laughs> sorry, I got excited. <laughs> uh, not much else to the setup than that that I can think of. Uh, it's an interesting piece of kit because the harness on the back isn't detachable anywhere. Oh, it's um, got an H harness too, huh? So you kind of have to shimmy into it from above. Does it tie off in the back at all? <clears throat> well, you can, there's these double D rings, but you're not gonna be able to reach them yourself. Oh, so okay. it seems like the best option is is either with a buddy or you just kind of have it like I do where it's going to hang down a little lower than some people might like their kit. Um, and also these front straps are ungodly long so you can wear them with Soviet winter gear and body armor and still fit this thing around your body. Yeah, so that looks like it would be uh, like running a slick carry under that thing would be comfortable just because like it's got the H harness on the yep. back. That's the one thing I like about H harnesses is if you're going to wear uh, like a slick carrier underneath. I find it a lot better than running an X harness because X harness tends to ride up on your neck. Yep. So it's not as comfortable. Um, it's, it's almost like it's like the Soviets took the idea of the Chicom and just expanded upon yeah, it. Yeah, my understanding similar. is it's basically an evolution of that. There mm -hmm. are a lot of Soviet guys who I think use Chicoms. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can see They clearly like the idea that it beat the you know triple mag carrier on your hip. Yeah. Um, you know, that's kind of what I'm running. Yeah. But um, so. the freaking uh, so you can run so five four five mags. The flaps will close. Yep. With doubles in them. Yep. Oh wow. I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Good. No, they they do they do. I've got some five four five mags at home. Um, spoilers. What, and you said this is Soviet Afghan War era, so like kind yep. of like mid 80s. Late. Uh, uh, 79 to 89. 79 to 89. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Dante knows a lot about Soviet gear. You're gonna learn here a little bit sooner. Yep. But and uh, then. Uh, and you're going to be wearing this um, at uh, Caspian Assault, right? That's the plan currently. So Caspian Assault's an event that we're actually all going to be going to as Rust4 or Militia, which is kind of the same team. But we're all going to be wearing the kit that... Are you going to be wearing that kit? I'm in? not. Okay, no, you're going to be wearing I'll be running a modern FSB kit with plate carrier. Oh, okay. But we're all going to be going, um, and essentially this kit, you know, something a little bit different for you, but... You know, it's kind of cool that we're out here uh, testing out our kit, you know, before we actually use it. You know, not with real guns, obviously, but with airsoft, yeah. airsoft equivalents. Um, so, in, but you're going to be running a, uh, what was the gun that you're going to be running at that, that event? Uh, no or, spoilers. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, all right, guys, uh, so moving on to me. So I just got this uh, SSO Smirsh just a little bit, uh, about a month and a half ago. I've been running uh, kind of, you know, off and on, and... I've been trying to test out different styles of belt kit slash load bearing gear. And I'll be honest, I've kind of fallen in love with this thing, uh, especially compared to, I know some people are gonna hate me for this, but as opposed to the Alice uh, gear. It, the first thing I started hearing about when I got the Smirsh was how difficult it was to put together. I could not disagree more. I think this thing was fairly easy to put together because as soon as I, you know, as soon as you get this thing, it's all in this butt pack right here, shoved in in different pieces. And people are like, man, you're gonna want to crack a few beers before starting to put that thing together. But honestly, it was fairly easy to put together. I followed some instructions on a all Russian, you know, YouTube video where the guy was speaking in Russian the entire time. I got halfway through that video and I showed it off. I was like, I got this. So. Essentially, you just weave these pouches. So each of these individual pouches here, I've been told can hold three 545 mags. I just got two in them right now. They got a little divider. So I got two 545 mags. Uh, facing forward, I find that to be easiest to grab. Um, just like that, even on the right side, because if I run out, um, I can just kind of reach across here and grab it like this. But you got two 545 mags in this pouch, two 545 in this pouch. This pouch, I got two more, so that's six so far. And in this one, you can actually take the divider out in this thing. I got an Algene bottle, so it's a nice little um, ability just to carry water. I might, I don't know for the ammunition requirements for Milsim West that we're going to that, how many rounds you're able to carry. I might run two Nalgene bottles, honestly, and just have four here and one in the gun because you're, there's some ammunition requirements there, but I might run that that way. And these, uh, 
frag pouches. I got a just a multi-tool in there. I might have some, you know, frags in them for that milsim game, just because, you know, we got airsoft grenades. But uh, on the back here, I actually got comm. So I found this little uh, tactical tailor radio pouch at a local like surplus store. I snagged it up. It's got malice clips on the back. It actually fits out really well. And it took a little jerry rigging to get the, you know, the wire management. So I kind of had to tie all that stuff in a bundle here. But I literally have the push to talk running from down here and then through these pouches underneath. So it kind of retains the wire and got it running on the back here. So I can, it's actually kind of cool. I can run a longer antenna on the back and not getting away in my front. One of the, and I can, if I need to adjust anything, I just need to shimmy this over. Um, as far as the buck pack, I don't got anything in it right now, but I'm probably gonna be running some like my rain gear or cold weather gear in there. Cause it's gonna be December when we're going to that event. So it will be kind of nice to test out this gear completely. And I've noticed like these, these harness straps here are very comfortable to wear, especially over a long period of time. Especially when they're weighed six down. Point? Oh yeah. When those things are weighed down, it four the It's, it's, oh, it's uh, four, four points. Point. So two, one here, one here, and then it goes down to an H harness in the back. And I've also noticed that wearing this thing with a slick uh, plate carrier underneath is very comfortable too. So, you know, if you want to up armor while wearing this thing, um, you could do that and no issues there at all. That's What's actually what the um, Russians did during the Bezlan school siege. Yeah. They had the old school smirches over top of um, body armor. Really? And they were, it was perfect. Yeah. And they, they've ran that setup even till today perfectly with no no issues. Yeah, that's something I might be testing out here soon is just wearing like body armor with this kit. And um, I mean, looking into buying one of those Soviet, or those, uh, not Soviet, but Russian slick carriers you can buy and probably running that with this thing. I think it will be pretty cool. What, uh, what shirt you're wearing? Oh, yeah, underneath got my Lao G shirt. Go to the website, pick one up for yourself. LARP in Observation Group. So it's two acronyms in one, making it a macronym. <laughs> right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, that's essentially what I got going on here. Smirsh, um, if you haven't gotten one, I'd highly recommend getting one. They're very comfortable. And the only downside to it is running a pistol. Um, unless you want to run like a super drop leg holster, but you can get um smarsh attachments for pistol holders. Oh really? Yep. Yeah. Might look into getting one of those. Yeah, those are Just cool. duct duct tape it to your back. <laughs> yeah, like like die hard. Yeah, I mean, obviously. <laughs> a little and, weird with a rock, but you just gotta train. <laughs> yeah, and pistols in a rifleman loadout, honestly, is kind Overrated. of a dubious of importance. Kind of get maybe get into that into a different video about the importance of pistols and for riflemen, but um, yeah, that's essentially what I got going on. I'm not running a pistol for Milsom West, so it's not really a big deal to me anyways. But, um, so what do you got going on, man? My name's Dante. I'm at Appalachian.ape on Instagram. And um, this is a 2014 Russian reconnaissance kit. Uh, the chest rig is a JTEC MK2. I think this is one of the best AK chest rigs out there, simply because the general purpose pouches on both sides. Those are sewn on? Yes, uh, I have a canteen in this one and a full non-rat fucked MRE in the other. Wow. I can hold eight magazines in the front, and then of course it has the molly panel here. I have two frag pouches and then a uh, tourniquet here. Yeah, full, oh, nice. full MRE. What, what MRE is it? Uh, that is Chilly a- Chili with beans! Yeah. And then we got a this canteen here. Yeah. Then I have my 152. I don't have my push to talk here, which is kind of a fail, but you know. It is what it is. Um, medical, I like running fanny pouches. They're, uh, I think they're very versatile. You are doing it, aren't you? Are you gonna cook that what? thing right here? Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, this flap here, you can pull it up and then it has a bib that you can drop a plate into. Oh, nice. And then you can buy a back panel and drop and a plate, plate in into that So one. you can so turn a chest rig into a plate carrier. I think you could do that. That's kind of similar to the uh, Rhodesian kit. That similar, are, yeah. Yeah, the, not the Rhodesian chest rig, like the actual Rhodesian, but the Eagle Rhodesian chest rig. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, they're, so very, those... uh, they're very similar. But who, these, who makes this again? JTEC. JTEC. So there's three companies that make chest rigs identical to this. There's JTEC. Tasmanian Tiger and A and A. A and A is the Russian brand. JTEC is the Chinese brand, and Tasmanian Tiger is the German brand. And do like Russia actually uses? Yes, this they thing? use all three. Oh wow! Uh, JTEC is the most popular because the materials better than A and A and uh, Tasmanian Tiger. So their Chinese one is the is yes. the better version. Yes. And uh, this chest rig, along with this uniform, which is Spectre, 
as uh, both of these have been issued to uh, Russian Special Forces. What, is, are they still using this yes. right now? Yes, okay. they are. Um, certain units, it depends what uh, what group you're a part of or issued different um, different kits. Mm -hmm. It really depends on what region of Russia you're in. Their military is like completely different than ours. Yeah, because it's kind of hard to track down. I noticed this a lot. That's why I'm kind of wearing these um, these ANA Tactical, or what's this called? Uh, freaking ATAX Foliage Green. So apparently this is kosher Russian camo. I had no idea because when building out a kit for Milsim West, <laughs> <laughs> you just rat plucked the MRE in front of everyone. <laughs> I see how it is. <laughs> so like Classic when I was researching, yeah. yeah, you just scabbed your fucking MRE while you're still I'm just littering. Just drowned you in the pond. Now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So like when I uh, when I first got into when I was signed up for Milsim West and I was going to do like the Russian side I didn't know how strict the uniform requirements are so I started diving into it and apparently ATAX is kosher so I went with that it's actually kind of a cool pattern it's a lot there like is um, a, a rumor that um, a, a very popular camo will be uh, kosher for Milsim West soon for the Rust Four side but I'm not going to say what camo it is is it multicam can't tell you because <laughs> Russians use multicam don't they. Or I'm looking at his chest rig. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> yeah. How many MREs you got in the fanny pack? None. Okay. That's just all, is that medical in there? Yep, everything's medical in here. I actually like running the med uh, medical in a fanny pack. Oh, I think it's a great option. Especially yeah. if it's supplemental. Or, 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 or dangler. But Take it off. Yeah. There you go. I just Work have like an, a cheap uh, Pat like Patagonia one, which are actually, the, the Patagonia one was like 20 bucks. I have one. I love it. Yeah. It's great. Um, so anyways guys that kind of goes over each of our individual AK kit setups that we're running right now This isn't just like this isn't like set in stone. This is just what we're doing uh, for each kind of individual uh, Different kind of kits. I got a belt kit You got a kind of old-school kit and you got a more modern kit So I kind of wanted to get a variety of stuff to show you guys and how you can run you know, different things to feed your AK. So yeah, there's not much info out there on it. I mean, yeah, you really have everything's to do a lot AR of, focused. Well, obviously, you know, obviously. America ARs are more, but you know, with AKs kind of becoming a little bit more popular here in America, especially with more uh, American built AKs, which we're going to get here in a second. Um, I think that this is some information people need to, the people need to yeah. know. I mean, and, and you constantly hear people complain, you know, how expensive AKs are getting, how expensive mags are getting. And I'll tell you what, the, uh, the best time to buy an AK is today. Mm -hmm. uh, well, sorry, the second best time to buy an AK is today. The best time was yesterday. Yeah. And that's only going to get worse. So if you want to get in on it, it's going to be better. I highly recommend getting in on it. You know, even, you know, some some American companies might want to stay away from, but, um, you know, mine's an American AK and mine's been running great. But anyways, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for part two of this video, which we're going to be going over our individual AKs. And, um, but in the meantime, if you want to support this channel, go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Blue Jean Operator and go ahead and plug your guys' Instagram accounts here real quick. So, firing yeah. device electrical M57 and, and Appalachian.8. Yeah. So, if you guys want to, you know, give them a follow, um, you can also go to my website, thebluejeanoperator.com. There you can pick out some sweet shirts. So, like this sweet poison bullet shirt, 545. Um, also, this newer shirt that we got going on here the Lao G LARP and observation group which you know you gotta, rep gotta, gotta represent the squad <laughs> represent the squad also got hoodies and jackets and stuff like that um, but anyways guys hope you enjoyed the video I'll see you guys next time